Well, today we are going to talk something about UBIL tract. Let me write the topic. UBIL, sorry, UBIL tract. Okay, now let me classify or simply name the parts of the UBIL tract. So, UBIL tract or UBIL tissues can be studied under three headings. From the anterior to posterior region, it can be named into three different names. The first one is iris, and the second one is ciliary body, and the third one being choroid. Okay, now let me name the different parts of iris. The iris is for the divided microscopically into four parts and the first one the uppermost layer or the outermost layer is anterior limiting layer and the second one is stroma and the third one is anterior epithelial layer and the fourth one is posterior pigmented epithelial layer. Now that we have divided iris into four different layers microscopically, now let's get into ciliary body. Ciliary body, when we see micros uh, in a microscope, we can see five different layers. And the first were the you know, superficial layer of this ciliary body is super ciliary layer or supraciliary you can write and the second one being stroma and the third one being layer of pigmented epithelium and the layer of non-pigmented epithelium, non-pigmented epithelium, and uh, the fifth one be internal limiting membrane. Internal limiting membrane. Now let's classify choroid. I hope you're seeing this. Uh, choroid is simply divided into three layers and the uppermost layer of the choroid is a suprachoroidal choroidal layer and uh, stroma and the third one is basal lamina basal lamina okay now let me show you this in picture. Suppose uh, this is your eyeball, okay? This is your eyeball. This is the line which I'm drawing. This is the layer of sclera. Okay, this is the sclera. Okay, I hope you're seeing this. And uh, after sclera comes a layer and that is your choroid. Okay, and from the middle part of anterior side of this ciliary, sorry, yeah, this ciliary body, there comes iris. Okay, here also let me draw this uh, ciliary body and choroid. Okay, and this is the iris. And here is your lens okay and this lens uh, is suspended by the suspensor ligaments okay and uh, okay let me use another pen here yeah this is your iris this is your iris this is your lens and this is a suspensor ligament okay and uh, so, now, evil tract, uh, we mean 
by evil tract uh, this layer okay evil tract is divided into three parts this is the iris part of the upil tract and uh, this up to the aura serrata this is a ciliary body ciliary body and uh, the part from here onwards up to the optic disc is the choroid now that we have uh, divided iris into these four parts and the ciliary body into five parts and choroid into three parts okay now let me complete this figure uh, this is the sclera part sorry yeah this is the sclera part and uh, here is your optic nerve okay and uh, here is your optic nerve and uh, this is your choroid part and here you can see a depression and that is the depression of the optic disc and this is the depression of phobia central centralis and this can you see this this is the retinal layer okay and uh, the junction between the visual and non-visual part of the retina is what we call aura serrata and uh, this very point is called aura serrata okay now let's talk about iris uh okay this is your iris so now let's get into iris uh, in a little bit details so you know iris it's like you know diaphragm diaphragm of your camera okay and uh, it, uh, its center has aperture and its aperture is called pupil has aperture and that is called pupil okay and uh, that pupil is of around four millimeter diameter and uh, at periphery at periphery periphery it is attached to the middle of anterior surface of the ciliary body can you see this this iris is attached to the middle of the anterior part or anterior surface of the ciliary body okay at periphery it is attached to the attached to the middle part of the anterior surface of the ciliary body okay and uh, you know this iris it divides the space between this uh, cornea and uh, the lens into two parts and uh, the two spaces are called chambers the anterior one is the anterior chamber and the posterior one is called posterior chambers okay now let's uh, talk something about macroscopic uh, features or appearance of the iris okay you know iris uh, if i draw the uh, section of iris this is the you know coronal section and the, the coronal sections cut section okay this is coronal section and that also i've got uh, a part of this circle okay and uh, this you know this layer this is the zigzag line rather than a layer and this zigzag line uh, separates the lower and the upper part of the iris and the lower part of the iris is called pupillary pupillary zone and the upper is called ciliary zone and uh, you know the upper ciliary zone has uh, you know crypts okay these crypts are the layer in which uh, uh, you know is, uh, is the zone in which uh, the anterior limiting layer is absent okay these are the periphery, peri, 
feral crypts and these are the central crypts okay here you cannot find this anterior limiting layer okay and uh, below this peripheral layer you can find the streaks of the you know circular uh, impressions okay and circular impressions or streaks okay and these are nothing but the impression of the blood vessels okay and uh, yeah this is all about ciliary zone and uh, in the pupillary zone here you can see pigment frills pigment frill uh, I will tell uh, a little bit about this later on but uh, for now just remember that this pigment frill is formed by the posterior pigment layer of the iris okay so this is the macroscopic structure you can see of the iris and this uh, you know figure is arm swaying from the front part or this is the coronal section now let's get into the microscopic feature of the iris now i'm going to tell some interesting facts about the uh, microscopic layers of the iris okay so now let's get into the microscopic part microscopic appearance of the iris so uh, number one that is anterior limiting layer anterior limiting layer you know this anterior limiting layer it is the actually condensed anterior part of the stroma okay condensed anterior part of the stroma okay uh, stroma is the second most layer and so when this stroma condenses you know it forms the anterior limiting layer and uh, it mainly contains melanocytes mela sorry melano sites and fibroblast okay and uh, you know it was previously called uh, endothelial layer uh, endothelial layer okay it was previously called previously but actually this is a misnomer okay and uh, you know this layer as i already told this layer is absent in these crypts peripheral crypts and the sorry central crypts and the peripheral crypts oh i forgot to name this line this is colarity okay cola r e t t e this colarity line is the zigzag line that divides the iris into the ciliary zone and the pupillary zone okay, and this is peripheral crypts your pts crypts and this is the central crypts okay and uh, you know uh, you can see some people have blue eyes and some people have brown uh, brown eye why why is that uh, because in the people who have blue eyes uh, in such people the anterior limiting layer of the iris has very thin uh, or less amount of pigments and the layer is very thin in such people okay and uh, now let's uh, get into the iris stroma okay i'm turning the space okay um stroma okay uh stroma under stroma you can see okay come on i'll make uh, a picture that will help uh, you to understand better suppose uh this is your lens and uh, this is your iris okay and let me magnify it Okay, this is your iris and this is another one let make it let's make it a small one as it is okay and let me divide this iris into four layers one two and three and four okay the anterior limiting layer that we're talking about is this number one layer and number two stroma number three and number four okay number one layer we already talked about now let's get into the stroma so stroma is all about uh, you know the elements it consists of they that is uh, it consists of loosely arranged 
collagenous network in which there is embedment of sphincter pupillae sphincter pupillae and uh, another muscle name i forgot what is that uh, yeah dilator pupillae dilator pupillae and uh, vessels and uh, nerves okay and macrophages and whatnot okay even yeah lymphocytes you can find so sphincter pupillae that we've been talking this sphincter pupillae and dilator pupillae uh, in the parasympathetic and sympathetic system that uh, were of the nervous nervous system okay uh, so let's uh, talk something about this and uh, um, sphincter pupillae it is supplied by parasympathetic nerves and the dilator pupillae is supplied by sympathetic nerve okay and this sphincter pupillae it helps in pupillary contraction and sympathetic it helps in dilatation okay as the name suggests and uh, this parasympathetic innervation is through the third nerve okay and uh, this sympathetic nerve supply is uh, from the cervical uh, nerve okay cervical branches now okay and the third layer that is anterior pigmented layer and posterior pigmented layer and there's nothing significant significant about this uh, layers anyways uh, this layer is the continuation of pigmented epithelium of retina okay this is the continuation of pigmented epithelium of retina and ciliary body okay and uh, this this is the continuation of non-pigmented epithelium epithelium of not the retina and ciliary both but it's the continuation of non-pigmented epithelium of only the ciliary body only the ciliary body okay so we have discussed the layers of uh you know iris in details okay